It's time to get your news on. We are VK1 WIA. And getting it on for you, I'm Graham VK4 Baker Baker. This week, WIA Vice President Lee Moyle, VK3 GK and Assessments, WIA AGM and Conference 2024 with David, VK4 DN, Secretary, Bundaberg Amateur Radio Club Plus. Much more in this edition of news from your Wireless Institute of Australia. This news originates from the Wireless Institute of Australia. Dreaming, believing, achieving. This is WIA Vice President Lee Moyle, VK3 GK. The ACMA continues to be working hard at getting a streamlined transition to class licensing come February 2024. This includes a comprehensive and volunteer-supported exam service using existing approved AMC assessors. Last week, the ACMA emailed registered assessors announcing that on Friday the 15th of December 2023, they will be holding an online information session for current AMC assessors. Following the positive feedback from ACMA's previous sessions, ACMA have decided to run the sessions between 12pm and 1pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time. This time is lunchtime for many and will be better to accommodate the time difference with all the VK6 assessors in Western Australia. If you are an AMC assessor and didn't receive the email, please contact ACMA to confirm you're on the AMC list. The session will provide another overview of the next key steps in transitioning to become an ACMA accredited assessor. Also provided will be an opportunity to ask questions about the accreditation process. An AMC representative will be in attendance to provide an overview of cut-off time frames for AMC examinations. The ACMA information session will be held on Microsoft Teams and there will be options to either join through video conferencing or telephone dial-in. For those assessors unable to attend the session, ACMA will send an email afterwards with an overview of the key points discussed and a copy of the PowerPoint slides from the session. Prior to the session, ACMA will send details of the next steps in the accreditation process and transition to the ACMA via email. Following these instructions carefully will ensure a smooth and timely transition to the ACMA. The ACMA will convince delivering qualification services itself from February 2024. At the same time, the class licence for amateur radio commences. As you may have seen in most recent ACMA update to amateur radio subscribers, ACMA are on track to provide an update in mid-December on the exact date in February that these changes will take place. If you're not already subscribed to the updates, you can subscribe here at https colon slash slash www.acma.gov.au forward slash node forward slash 296. The ACMA will accept new applications for accreditation as a general accredited assessor or specialist accredited assessor with the ACMA from the date the class licence commences. Requirements to become an accredited assessor will be detailed in the Radio Communications Accreditation, Amateur Radio Examinations, Rules 2023 and Assessor Guidelines which we anticipate will be released mid this month. Information on exactly how to apply will be provided in February 2024. If you have previously been a WIA assessor, and wish to renew your amateur radio assessing, I would encourage you to consider to apply to ACMA come February 2024 and become an ACMA accredited assessor. The WIA, along with its committees and working groups, continue to support ACMA throughout the transition to class licensing and establishing the new amateur radio exam service. Chris Dimitrivic, VK3FY, and myself, both being WIA board members, are also accredited AMC assessors and will be transitioning to the ACMA assessor program as we continue to support growing amateur radio in Australia. For now, 73 from Lee, VK3GK. Hi all, David here, VK4DN from the Bundaberg Amateur Radio Club. Just a reminder that if you're planning to attend the WIA convention here in Bundaberg on May the 4th and the 5th next year, you'll need to think about booking your accommodation very soon. Vacancies are being booked out quickly due to the fact that it's also the Labor Day long weekend. Head over to BundabergRegion.org website to make your booking. Also, if you're planning to travel to the weekend event with your caravan or mobile home, there are many options available in and around Bundy. Contact us if you need any assistance with finding accommodation or where to set up your camp. Cheers from David, VK4DN, Secretary, Bundaberg Amateur Radio Club. Hi, I'm Richard, VK2SKY, Publicity Officer for the Manly Warringah Radio Society in Sydney. 
Recently, our club was approached by a Danish company that provides ADSB services to industry. Many of you will be familiar with ADSB from aviation websites like Flight Radar 24, ADSB Exchange, etc. Rather than display aircraft locations, already well done by others, this particular company is using ADSB data to improve flight planning and safety, weather forecasting, and statistical analysis. The collected data can even be used to reduce CO2 emissions from aviation. The company is looking to improve its coverage in Australia independently of other data providers. They asked our club if we were interested in hosting one of their ADSB receivers and feeding the flight data to their servers in Denmark. We said yes. During our discussions with the company's head of technical support, he mentioned that they are interested in engaging with other amateur radio clubs in Australia. I thought I'd pass on this information to other technically minded clubs who might be interested in having an ADSB receiving system at their clubhouses. Anywhere, in any state, though they are particularly interested in locations near airports. The company supplies all the equipment, of course, and your club would need to have a reliable internet connection to pass on the received flight data. If this sounds like something that would interest your club, then you can contact the company directly. The link is in the text edition of this news. For WIA National News, I'm Richard VK2 SKY in Sydney. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now with international news, Jason, VK2 LAW. Hello, World Radio Conference update. The ITU World Radio Communication Conference 2023 continues. After numerous meetings, the 23-centimetre topic has made progress at the sub-working group level and the outcome is expected to progress up the WRC committee structure for adoption. Meanwhile, attention is also being paid to a wide variety of other current and future agenda proposals, where amateur frequency allocations are in scope from HF to VHF upwards into the microwave bands. During the ITU World Radio Communications Conference 2023 taking place in Dubai until next Friday, December 15, members of the Emirates Amateur Radio Society are QRV with a special call sign A60WRC. Individual operators may append a serial number from slash zero to slash 20 to this special call sign A60WRC during the event. QSL A60WRC via Echo Alpha 7, Fox Tango Romeo and all others via operator's instructions. To news from Region 1, investigations carried out by Ofcom Spectrum experts in the UK have helped to secure the conviction of a man who was deliberately causing harmful interference to amateur radio users in and around Hull. Ofcom had received complaints from radio amateurs in the area who were told of being subjected to deliberate interference of their transmissions as well as receiving abusive messages. The culprit had been using radio bands illegally to do this as he didn't have a licence to transmit. Ofcom were required to intervene in this case because the illegal activity was significant and targeted and it was suspected that the culprit was somebody who had previously been convicted of similar activity. The investigation involved using automatic monitoring equipment as well as Ofcom engineers working on the ground, monitoring live transmissions. This provided a picture of the impact of the illegal transmissions on the local radio community. All of this work took place in close collaboration with local police. The address of the suspect was confirmed, which enabled execution of a search warrant at the address. Radio equipment was seized that had been used to receive and transmit on the frequencies that were targeted with the harmful interference. The case went to court where, earlier this month, the defendant was found guilty of unlicensed use of radio equipment, illegal possession of radio apparatus, and causing deliberate interference to wireless telegraphy, all of which are offences under the Wireless Telegraphy Act. In a later sentencing hearing, he was sentenced to 26 weeks imprisonment. Engineers Ireland guest lecture by IRTS President Enda Broderick, Echo India 2, India, India. 
the Electronic and Computing Division of Engineers Ireland was delighted to welcome IRTS President and Engineer Ender Brondrick, EI2II, who delivered a lecture titled From Signals to Solutions, Amateur Radio's Impact on the Future of Engineering and Science, Technology and Engineering, Art and Maths, referred to as STEAM. Ender explored how the modern version of amateur radio can impact the interest of future generations to look at engineering differently. The hobby has all the elements associated with STEAM and can be used to develop a creative and fun environment to develop within. SARL and AMSAT SA joined forces at Science Forum South Africa. Under the banner Science in Amateur Radio, the SARL focused on the radio frequency monitoring system and the next generation beacon for tropospheric research, while AMSAT SA showcased AfriCube, a one unit CubeSat. Over 2,500 delegates participated in sessions about the future of society, innovation shaping the industry of tomorrow and STI enabling inclusive and sustainable development, among other themes. The scope of amateur radio is often misunderstood, and Science Forum South Africa offered a unique opportunity to focus on the science aspect of amateur radio and bring it to the attention of science institutions and various structures in government and civil society. To news from Region 2, ARRL RF Safety Committee develops new guidelines to communicate RF safety. Radio amateurs now have a new tool from ARRL to help answer questions about their stations. The ARRL RF Safety Committee, with their international counterparts at the Radio Society of Great Britain, the Irish Radio Transmitters Society and the Swedish Society of Radio Amateurs, has developed a new set of guidelines to help amateurs interact with and talk to their neighbours about RF exposure. Chairman of the ARRL RF Safety Committee, Greg Lappin, November 9 Golf Lima, said the new informational PDF found on the ARRL RF exposure page, helping amateurs interact with neighbours asking about radio transmissions, was developed after a year of discussions about RF safety. In New York, a raging fire swept through the last remaining laboratory of Nikola Tesla where a massive redevelopment began three years ago to create a science centre and a hub of amateur radio activity and education. Mark Alessi, the non-profit centre's executive director, said at a press conference that authorities have ruled out arson and are still investigating the cause. The historically significant laboratory building itself, set on a 15-acre site in Long Island, sustained damages of at least $3 million from the fire. A worldwide fundraising effort from Indiegogo has begun for the lab, which the Serbian-born scientist used in the early 1900s. This fundraising is separate from the already $20 million raised for the renovation, an effort that is still $6 million short of its goal. Amateur Radio Club November 2 Tango Sierra Charlie is housed in the Visitor's Centre and is in a different building from the devastated lab. Plans continue to go forward for the site's overall redevelopment as an educational and community resource, but it's not clear how far back the original opening date of late 2025 will be delayed. And to news from Region 3, hams help track down life-saving medicine for ill child in India. Hams in India raced the clock to help locate and deliver medicine in short supply to a critically ill little girl. The medicine was in her doctor's hands within 48 hours of being found. The girl's parents had been told by doctors at Dakar Medical College and Hospital that they were in short supply of the antiviral drug that successfully was treating their daughter and that no stock of the drug could be found elsewhere in the country at present. The girl's father told the Times of India that he promptly launched a search by contacting Rahat Khan, Sierra 21 Delta India, an amateur radio operator in Bangladesh. Rahat put out a call on his network of ham contacts in neighbouring countries, all to no avail. In India, hams in the West Bengal Radio Club found an alternative of the brand in the state of Kerala, but it was not clear whether the girl would respond to that drug. The necessary brand was at last located in New Delhi by one of the newest members of the club, 
Neandrath Jana, a student in the Indian Academy of Communication and Disaster Management. According to the club's secretary, the hams then tracked down someone at New Delhi Airport who was preparing to return home to Bangladesh and who agreed to transport the medicine. For VK1 WIA National News, in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. We are VK1 WIA. Now, operational news with VK4 FUQ. Felix. Hello there. DX window to the world. VP9 QSL Bureau discontinued. The Radio Society of Bermuda will be discontinuing its QSL Bureau service VP9 stations beginning December 31st, 2024. Activity will be phased out over the next 12 months or so. In the world of DX, fans of the world's longest running science fiction TV show, Doctor Who, will be listening for special call signs starting with GB0WHO through GB9WHO until the 20th of December. The cult series marked its 60th anniversary on the 23rd of November. This show's original 694 episodes ran steadily until 1989, but it was revived much to fans' delight, in 2005. See qsr.com for QSL details. Malawi. Don. 7Q6M is QRV until May 13, 2024, and has also been active on 160 metres. QSL via LOTW. Bahrain. Members of the Bahrain Amateur Radio Society are QRV as a 91ND until next Saturday, December 16. To celebrate the Kingdom of Bahrain's National Day. QSL via EC60X. The Val Dam celebrates its 85th birthday. The Sasselborg ARC will be operating ZS85 VDAM now to the 1st of April 2024 to celebrate the 85th anniversary of the opening of the Val Dam. There is a special QSL card available. Send your QSL card to the Sasselborg ARC to receive the ZS85 VDAM QSL card. ARRL 10 Meter Contest The ARRL 10 Meter Contest is on the air from 0000 hours UTC on Saturday 9 December until 2359 hours UTC on Sunday 10 December using CW and SSB and operating for a maximum of 36 hours out of the 48 hour period. Off times must be at least 30 minutes long. All stations exchange a signal report, while US, Canadian and Mexican stations send their state or province. DX stations send a serial number, and maritime mobile stations send ITU region 1 to 3. Your log must be uploaded within 7 days after the contest. Now, contest-wise, 2024. Ross Hall Memorial Contest running on VHF and above for the month of January. January 2024, VHF, UHF Summer Field Day, 13, 14 January. Australia Day Contest. It is held on the Australia Day Public Holiday, 26th of January. Some VK operators will be using the AX prefix to celebrate Australia Day. New Zealand's Jogwide Memorial Field Day will be 24, 25 February 2024. Trans-Tasman Lobin Contest, July 21, 2024. August 17, 18, 2024, Remembrance Day Contest. This contest commemorates the Australian amateurs who died during World War II. Again, the 2024 contest is 17 and 18 August. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Felix, VK4 FUQ in England. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1 WIA. Now, special interest group news with VK3 GTV. Cole. Hello, first up in Worldwide Special Interest Group News, it's Summits on the Air, Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program, Parks on the Air and other adventure groups. Summits on the Air is offering a 10-metre challenge in 2024. The challenge will run from 0 hundred hours UTC on January the 1st, 24, to 2359 UTC on December 31st, 2024. SOTA held a 12-metre challenge in 2013, and since then more than 90 associations have been added to the SOTA program, including many in South America, the Caribbean and Asia. There is excellent potential for DX SOTA activity and activators are encouraged to consider 28 MHz for their summit operations in 2024. 
Scoring will be done automatically by the database software. Activations and chases should be entered as normal. The software will note 10 meter QSOs and score them according to the rules. Usual SOTA rules will apply. Multiband activations can also be entered as normal and all results will be updated. Qualifying 10 meter QSOs will be scored separately from other SOTA activity. There'll be a special 10 meter challenge results page and electronic certificates will be issued to all participants with their name, call sign, association and score. For more information, including the rules for the challenge, visit the Summits on the Air website. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. An innovative experiment flying aboard NASA's Psyche mission just hit its first major milestone by successfully carrying out the most distant demonstration of laser communications. The tech demo could one day help NASA missions probe deeper into space and uncover more discoveries about the origin of the universe. The experiment beamed a laser encoded with data from far beyond the moon for the first time. The test data was sent from nearly 16 million kilometres away and reached the Hale Telescope at the California Institute of Technology's Palomar Observatory in Pasadena, California. A fascinating article in Aviation Week Network describes the development of the CubeSat standard by AMSAT member Bob Twiggs, KE6QMD, and co-inventor Jordi Pugh-Swari, an aerospace engineering professor at California Polytechnic State University. Searching for a way to simplify the projects and cut out build time, Twiggs thought, what if we made the satellite a cube and put solar panels on all sides, so no matter which way it rotated, it was going to get charged? With some spare solar cells from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, he went down to a local shop and found a 4x4x4-inch transparent box. It was also around that time, 1999, that an infamous error caught Twig's attention. That year, a mix-up between Imperial and metric units by a Lockheed Martin's engineering team caused NASA's Mars Climate Orbiter to burn up in the Red Planet's atmosphere, ending the mission early. He said, it's about time students learn metric, and wondered what the 4-inch box is in metric. Well, it turned out to be just almost 10 centimetres. AMSAT Canada officially incorporated amateur radio satellites and systems. Canada, AMSAT CA, has officially been incorporated to support amateur radio in space. Over the next few months, AMSAT CA will establish processes around its online presence as well as membership opportunities. The first major effort from AMSAT CA will be to develop a paper in support of the European Space Agency's proposal for a European and Canadian geosynchronous amateur radio satellite project. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, IOTA, Easter Island. George, CE0YHF is QRV until today, Sunday, December the 10th, while working at a hospital on Pasqua Island, IOTA SA001. Activity is on 30 through to 6 metres, using some CW and SSB, but mostly FT8. Oliver, W6NV, will again be active from St. Helena Island as ZD7W during mid-February, including participation in the April DXCW contest between the 17th and 18th of February. This will be Oliver's third visit to St. Helena, previously in 2015 and 2019. Morocco, Yannick, F6FYD as QRV as CN2YD until March the 15th, 2024. He'll also be active as CN2YD portable from Agadir Island, IOTA AF065 during this time. Activity is on HF bands and QSL to home call. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Lowdown. Historic transmitter in Sweden to transmit traditional Christmas message. Christmas time is a time of tradition, and for radio enthusiasts in Sweden, there are few traditions more loved and anticipated than hearing a Christmas message sent via a transmitter that is fast approaching its 100th year. 
Jeremy Boots, G4NJH, explains. The pride of the pioneering Swedish engineer Ernst Alexanderson, his 200 kilowatt high frequency alternator, built in 1924, has a Christmas message to deliver to the world this year as in previous years. On Christmas Eve morning, Sunday the 24th of December, the radio station in Grimmerton, with the call sign SAQ, will deliver the words in the holiday spirit in CW at 08. 800 UTC at 17.2 kilohertz. Those of us who cannot be present can still watch the historic transmitter and hear its message being sent during a live stream on the SAQ Grimmerton YouTube channel. The transmitter's startup will also be live streamed starting half an hour before the message. There are also many ways to listen, but because there are few radios capable of directly receiving the transmitter's frequency, there are internet receivers and other options available. See the link in the text version of this week's newscast to discover other ways to tune in. This is Jeremy Bucci for NJH. Thanks, Jeremy. Next up, it's Worldwide Special Interest Group's Radio Amateur Young Timers, Yota, and a Yota Month special event. Alec, VK2APC, has the details. Thank you, Cole. Youth operated stations around the world are part of a special event celebrating youth in amateur radio. During the month of December, radio operators ages 25 and younger are on the air as special event stations. In the United States this year, the call signs will once again be K8 Yankee, K8 Oscar, K8 Tango, and K8 Alpha. Argentina will be active as LR1 Yoda, Canada as VE3 Youth, VE2 Yoda, and VA7 Yoda. El Salvador is YS1 Yoda. All amateur radio operators are encouraged to listen for and contact these stations as well as call signs ending in the letters Yoda across the globe. Last year, We Young Hams Worldwide surpassed our goal of 100,000 QSOs in the month of December with a final tally of 107,845. Overlapping with Yoda Month is round three of the Yoda Contest, which is on December 30th from 1200 hours to 2359 hours UTC. I'm Alec, VK2APC in Sydney. Now back to you, Cole. Thanks, Alec. On to Worldwide Special Interest Group's Rescue Radio, Weiss and Tasmania News. Weiss and Intuit Scouts were kept safe during their 2023 Clark Trophy competition. Weissen members Gary, VK7JGD, and Anthony, VK7AG, attended the event, provided safety communications, along with scoring traffic at Oatlands. With over 50 participants for the 24-hour event, both operators were kept extremely busy operating three, yes, that's correct, three radio channels, which also made for a huge amount of paperwork that had to be completed on the go as well. Their operating location was on a hilltop in the middle of the farm property used for the hike camp competition. The scouts were on one CB channel to provide HQ with their overnight camp locations, as well as any safety and medical requests. Another channel was used by the leaders at various locations to forward scoring information from the activities they were judging. A two-metre channel was used by the Weissen crew to then relay this info down to the HQ location at the property homestead. The hilltop relay station was needed as much of the activity area was screened from HQ by the same hill. They also needed to keep a listening watch on the radios overnight in case of emergency. Worldwide Special Interest Group's video, ATV, SSTV and other forms such as YouTube, tinyurl.com slash WIA hyphen news hyphen videos. That link is a video version of this news compiled by VK5BD Bevan. Didn't catch the link? Just search YouTube for VK5BD. The latest RSGB 2023 convention video to be released is three presentations in one on the topic of the 23 centimeter band. Barry Lewis, G4SJH, talks about amateur and RNSS coexistence in the 23 centimeter band. Then John Worsnop, G4BAO considers how the possible RNSS changes will affect narrowband DX and Earth-Moon Earth operation. And finally, Dave Crump, G8GKQ, looks at the future of ATV on the 23 centimetre band. 
These presentations were given before the WRC 23 conference and final arrangements will depend on the WRC 23 outcome. You can watch the presentation on the RSGB YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the RSGB. That's it for the segment for this week. I'm Cole, VK3GTV. Okay, now we do have a 2023 social scene and it's something that you can all take part in because you'll do it from home. Next week, the news will be brought to you by the Australian Ladies Amateur Radio Association. Yes, Alara members will be here with their annual Christmas edition of WIA National News. And until then, I'm Graham VK4BB. Walk softly. From Australia, this has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.